because I believe a man is supposed to take care of his woman. I don't care how much money your woman make. A man is supposed to have his mindset on taking care of his woman. I talk. I mean, this you know, this this may be a bit crude, but I mean, I don't know no other way to say it. Uh, I want to talk about um, booty calls. So today I want to look at realizing God's four keys to realizing God's plan for your life. <clears throat> Four keys to realizing God's plan for your life. Now, let me warn you that when you really come into uh, an understanding, a cognizance, an awareness of God's plan for your life, a lot of people are not going to agree with it. And in a lot of instances, it will, it will absolutely, definitely cause you to have to part ways with people. And you have to be fine with that. You have to be good with that. You know, the direction that God is taking my life. Everybody from my past didn't agree. Did I waste time or sleep over that? Absolutely not. I was put here for purpose. I was put here on purpose. And I'm here to fulfill purpose by any means necessary. Even Jesus told his own mama that. He said, I'm, you know, I'm here to do the will of my father, you know. I must be about my father's business. I'm here for purpose. And you have to also come to that clarity, you know, that moment where it's just crystal clear. I'm here for purpose. And anybody that does not agree with God's plan for my life, um, there's no debate. There's nothing to talk about. You know, my, my purpose and my destiny and my calling and my future are not up for debate. If God has called me to be this and to do this, this is what I must be, and this is what I must do. Um, <clears throat> if you look in uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11, which is where our uh, lesson from last Sunday and our lesson from Wednesday night came from, he says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, uh, thoughts of peace, and not of evil to give you an expected end. There's, there's an expected end. God says, I've already planned your ending. I've already, before I started you, I finished you. I've already planned your ending and your ending uh, is, is, there's no evil in it. There's, there's nothing bad about it. It's only good and great. Of course, through the process and processing you, uh, you know, there will be sunshine and rain, but ultimately where you're supposed to end up is supposed to be a great place. But the interesting thing that we discovered in our last lesson was that God knows the plan. God knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us. He, he finishes our lives before he starts us, but then he gives us the great benefit or privilege, should I say, to search out the plans that he has for us. And so destiny is not automatic. We must discover God's plans for us. One portion of scripture says, you know, it is, it is, the, it is the power of God, I'm paraphrasing, uh, to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search it out. God conceals or hides your purpose, your destiny within you. And then he puts you in this thing, this process called life, that you might discover it and evolve into it and grow into it. So point number one in realizing God's plan for your life is number one, we search for the plan of God. You cannot search for God's plan <clears throat> When you're, excuse me, when you're overly consumed with the opinions of men, you cannot search for God's plan, nor will you find the plan of God when you are overly consumed with what these people or those people or this person thinks. There are many of you who are missing the plan of God because you're so busy trying to be everything people want you to be. Have you not woke, awakened yet to realize that you cannot really please God and man at the same time? If you're going to follow God's plan for your life, you are going to disturb, disrupt, and probably um, anger a lot of people. 
But at some point, you have to wake up and you have to say, I'm searching for God's plan. I'm not trying to please people. I'm not trying to uh, appease people. I'm not trying to be what people think uh, they want me to be or need me to be. Some people are trying to keep you in a box because they need you to stay in that box. You have to break out of that box that people have built for you. And you have to say, I'm searching for the plan of God for my life. I'm searching for what God has said I'm supposed to be, what God has said I'm supposed to do. I'm here for more than just waking up in the morning, eating all day, going back to sleep at night, going to work the next day, eating all day, going to church, going to sleep at night, doing the same thing for the next 80, 90 years. There's a plan, a specific and good plan that God has for my life, and I am going to search for it. Everybody's not cut out of or cut from the same cloth. We take our children even, and we want to make all of our children fit into the mold that their other siblings fit into. All children are not college material. So Y'all got to wake up. Some of them are not. Some children are just going to be natural business people, entrepreneurs. Some children are just going to be great employees and, and have great careers in terms of, you know, working on jobs for a long time and being faithful and diligent. You know, the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. The way he should go is the way God's planned. Every parent should pray for what is God's plan for my child? And you should start steering them in that direction so that they can discover it sooner than later. The Bible says in Proverbs 1921, there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. In other words, a man has many ideas in his head, but God's ultimate plan is going to always win out. I, it was never my, trust me, it was never my plan. It was never my idea to be a preacher, certainly not to be a pastor. I didn't want to be responsible for people. I didn't want to have to be an example to people. I didn't want my life under microscope. I didn't, you know, I just didn't want all of the stuff that comes along with this. But ultimately, it's hard to kick against a prick. When God has planned something for your life, you will find no sense of rest or peace in anything outside of what God has planned. And so I'm grateful that I didn't fight God and that I was young when I accepted the call of God on my life, the plan of God for my life. But all of us have to search for that specific plan. The second thing you have to do is once you find that plan, once you locate the plan, uh, you have to, number two, rely on the ability of God because what God has planned for you is bigger than you. You don't think God has planned a lateral move for you, huh? You don't think God has planned something that is equivalent to what you are now. No, God's plans for you are so much more than what you are now, which, which, which means that, you know, your future is so far beyond your present. Your, your, your truest identity is so much bigger than your present profile. And, and when you begin to realize and you begin to hear the voice of God relative to what his real plan is for you, it can become frightening because it, it calls for you to become more than you ever dreamed you could be. And it is then that we come to point two, we must rely on the ability of God. When we locate God's plan, it seems impossible to us. But you have to understand that if God gave you the plan, if God has given you the vision, if God has called you to it, God uh, will also empower you. And you're not by yourself, you're working together with him to accomplish what God has called and assigned to your life. You don't need to be fearful anymore about stepping into this thing that you know God has called you to because you're going to, number two, rely on the ability of God. It took me a long time to learn this. You know, I'm out here trying to past and do all of this stuff, man, in my own power when this stuff was about to drive me literally out of my mind. Actually, I think I had a couple of nervous breakdowns. You know, so some of y'all say I'm a little off anyway. There's a, re there's, there's a reason for it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason for it. When you try to do what God has called you to do by your own power and you don't rely on his ability, it will kill you. You cannot do what God has called you to do in your flesh. 
You cannot do what God has called you to do in your flesh. So you don't need to get afraid about the plan of God. You need to, number two, just rely on the ability of God. And listen to what the Bible says in Zechariah 4, 6 through 10. It says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Now it goes further and it says, Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and, through, to and fro through the whole earth. When God has called you to it, his ability is at work for you. The only time the ability of God does not work for the thing or work with you in terms of the thing he's called you to is when you step in front of God and you get in your flesh. Some of you need to simply just take your hands off of it because God is already dealing with it. So number one, number one, you got to search for the plan of God. Number two, you got to rely on the ability of God. Number three, and I only have four, you got to trust for the provision of God. Because some of the things that God's calling you to in terms of business, in terms of ministry, in terms of family, in terms of career, or whatever, it calls, it calls for money. The Bible says money answers all things. It calls for money calls for provision, calls for resources. And sometimes it's not just money. Sometimes it's human resources. You need, you need certain kinds of people. Like as a pastor, I'm praying for God to continue to fill our ministry with certain kinds of people that are really going to be partners and not problems. You know, people that are, are going to be supportive and, and not in the back of the, you know, the boat drilling holes, you know, people, people that are going to roll. So I, I need the provision of God in terms of human resources. And there are some of you that need human resources. You need financial resources. You have to trust God for the provisions that you need. This thing that God has called you to, God will provide. If God ordered it, he'll pay for it. If God ordered it, if God ordered it, he will pay for it. If he gave you the vision, he will make the provision. And look what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, and 8. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a what? Cheerful giver. And listen to what the, what the text says. And God is able, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that she always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. God is able to make all grace or favor abound towards you, that you'll always have all sufficiency in all things that you may abound to every good work. Whatever work God has called you to do, he is more than able and willing to make provision for it, that you will have all sufficiency. And then look what the Bible says in Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man, that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? God will make the provision for your vision. God will provide the provision for the journey. All God's waiting on you to do is to say yes. Search for his plan. God, how do you do that? God, what is your plan for my life? What is your plan for my life? And sometimes to hear the voice of God, you have to get rid of all of the other voices that are cluttering your hearing. It's like Abram, God told him, don't bring his family, he brought Lot. And you notice God stopped talking to Abram after he got tied up with Lot. As soon as Abram got rid of Lot, God started talking again. 
if you want to discover number one, point number one, the plan of God, searching for the plan of God, get, get negative and get worldly, carnal-minded people out of your ears. And the sad reality is that you don't have to go to your job or in your neighborhood or to the club to find carnal people. They come to church. You have to get some of these voices out of your ear because you're, you're incapable of hearing God's voice to you because you have so many of these people talking in your ear with all of this craziness, searching for the plan of God, it's paramount, relying on the ability of God. God, I can't do this. You know, I'm at a stage in my life where I can't do everything that's assigned to me. I just can't do it. I can't do it. And so I'm relying on the ability of God, which brings me to point three. I'm trusting God for provision. Thing I need now more than anything, human resources. I need people that 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 I can count on, even when I don't have to, when I'm not there to look over them. I need people that are loyal and people that are, are competent and capable and will hold their position and be in place. I need money. I need people that are gonna give money. I'm trusting God. I'm trusting God, and as I'm trusting God, I'm realizing the great plan God had for me from the beginning. I'm realizing it. It's manifesting every day. God is expanding. He's increasing my territory, expanding my borders every day. You got to trust him for the provision. Stop looking to man. Some of you are waiting on man to finance your vision. You're waiting on people to get behind your vision. Stop worrying about people. Stop worrying about other folks' wallets and trust God. He will provide for you. Don't go around begging people to take care of you and to help you with what God has given you. Do not go and beg people to help you with your vision. God gave you the vision. God will make the provision. And don't get no attitude. Keep on loving them. But let them witness. They don't have to participate. Just let them witness. On Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon, uh, you know, most of the people in the dome, for the saints are, are, are spectators. They're witnessing. They ain't on the field playing. You don't need everybody on the field. God will give you the people. He will provide the people that are supposed to be on the field with you. Don't get hung up and caught up when folk don't support your vision, you know, physically or emotionally or financially. Trust me. Let them sit in the stands and observe. They're going to watch you win. You're going to still win. If they participate or not, you're still going to win. And then number four, and let me go. I'm just rambling. Number four and finally. Number three was you got to trust God for the provision. And then number four, you got to practice the peace of God. While, you're, while this thing is unfolding, while this thing is, you know, um, manifesting and you're realizing God's plan for your life, you have, to, you have to practice the peace of God. And that, that simply means you have to begin to practice resting in God. You have to begin to practice resting in God. <clears throat> because it's so easy in life to become so overwhelmed with so many cares. It's kind of like the Mary Martha syndrome. Which are you? Jesus is, you know, two friends, Mary and Martha, two sisters. Mary sat at Jesus' feet and worshiped. While Martha was busy working and concerned about a whole lot of different things, worried and troubled, and Jesus said, you worrying about all kind of stuff. This thing that Mary's doing, this, this is the best part. It's not going to be taken from me. I choose to be, I choose to become more like Mary because I've been like Martha too much of my life. Just, just, you know, troubled and stressed and worried and concerned about all kinds of things. But now I'm learning to practice the peace of God. I'm learning to rest in God. What God allows, I'm learning to rest in that. Because all things work together for my good. I can't speak for you. But as for me, all things work together for my good. Because I love God and because I'm called according to his purpose. You know, so learn to practice the peace of God. If you don't mind, even, even right where you are, just put your, put your hands Right on, your, right on your temples and just say, I stand in the rest of God. Come on, say it. I stand in the rest of God. I am at peace. I am at rest. My soul is at rest. And listen to what the Bible says, and I'm done. In Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. 
thou will keep him in perfect peace, undisturbed, undisturbable peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because, watch this, he trusteth in thee. I'm at rest because I'm trusting. I don't always see it. I don't always know it, but I'm always trusting. Because he trusteth in thee, trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So realizing God's great plan for your life is my prayer for you, that God will just literally take you and just warp speed you over these last seven, eight weeks or so that we have in 2018 at the time I'm filming this. I'm praying that God will just so focus your purpose and his plan for you and that God will show you your future in him and that you will get rid of all of the distractions and drop all of the pettiness and all of the worry and lock in on God so that we can witness the great thing that God had already planned before your father met your mother. Your life is not designed to be stuck and stagnant and going around in circles in the same place. Your life is designed to soar. And that's my prayer for you. The, the oil that's on the head should flow down to the body. And right now my life is, is doing things that are amazing me. And that's what I, that's my prayer for you. That God will show you who you are and that you will accept that and walk in that identity and purge your soul of every lie that contradicts God's word over your life.